Okay, what I'm going to share in the slide is not really um, specific, but the one that in the slide is more like a guide. But uh, what I'm going to share with you, the actual example of thesis is going to be quite latest. Yeah. So the last part of research methodology is more on writing. So this is thesis writing, and after this will be scientific writing. Scientific writing means how to write uh, what we call as a journal. Oh. <clears throat> um, like, um, I think we have done a lot on literature writing, but it has to be, you know, you have to do the practical one. You have to write one in order to understand how literature is being written. And I also, uh, after this, um, sort of guide you on how to write a scientific journal. Yeah? Even though you don't have any results or any scientific findings yet, but it's just uh, guide you on how, what to look, uh, what will be the important part in scientific writing. So this is thesis, yeah? So this is just um, giving a, a, a general statement on what this is. Um, so when you proposed, uh, means a proposal, you have your hypothesis. Means that you hypothesize what is the expected results, what you should be achieving, and then you do the job, you do the lab work and all that. And then you uh, report the results in a form of uh, thesis. So thesis is where you gather, discuss all the evidence supporting your hypothesis at the beginning of your research. All right? Because you like hypothesize. Uh, this is going to be what uh, expected results. And then you, uh, in the thesis, you put all the evidence. Yeah. All right. So this is this is all about convincing people, putting all the evidence there. All right. To this, and your thesis must show two important things. You have identified the worthwhile problem. So we have discussed about problem uh, in, in uh, detail. <coughs> And then you have the solution and you answer the questions, some part of it, and the results are in the thesis. All right. So uh, this one, uh, no issue. Uh, you don't have to. Just <laughs> this one, we don't have to. Uh, look again because this we it has been uh, discussed many many times before about the uh, problem statement okay and then uh, we have discussed about this many many times uh, many many times before okay uh, right okay so style it depends on the university. So best is to check on um, School of Graduate website, uh, the latest uh, format, all right? Because uh, when you submit the thesis, usually it has to be according to the format of the university, okay? Okay, so uh, don't worry, I'll be showing the actual example after this. So uh, this is just a guide. Basically, what should be in the thesis, uh, this thesis structure. <laughs> Sorry. So basically, uh, this is what the uh, content of thesis. You have introduction, you have literature review, material and methods, which is methodology sections, results and discussion, and conclusion. Uh, but now, um, there are other format of thesis. Uh, uh, based on scientific journals that the app uh, candidate has uh, published. So that one I will not be discussing that formats. So I'll be only discussing this type of 
format only. Yeah. Okay. So, okay, uh, we move on because I will show you the actual <laughs> example. Okay, usually abstracts for UPM, and I don't know about also at the university, it shouldn't be too long. It should be two pages uh, max. And then um, um, you don't have to put paragraph. If you, if you want to, you can put paragraph. Okay, so this is the major content in the abstract. Uh, you have you need to have a bit of introduction, one or two lines on introduction, uh, the problem statement as well, and then your approach, um, uh, how, and then you have to state the major results, the main results, and of course, conclusion on the impact significant impact and then the conclusion yeah okay let's keep this okay <laughs> okay introduction similar to the proposal uh development um uh you already knew this the the storyline, okay, so you already knew how to introduce your, your research, okay. So the word hook here, similar to what we have discussed in uh, oral presentation. So it is best to hook the people at the beginning of the introduction. This is to motivate the reader to read the rest of the thesis. But I think, um, yeah, I mean, it's up to you. <laughs> Whether you are just a moment, somebody right? Yeah, yeah, I'm recording this, Navitra. Yeah. Okay. Uh, right. So, in introduction as well. So similar to the proposal, you should at least cite some previous research uh, to convince people that this is, uh, there is room for improvement, okay? And then uh, you are going to improve the, the work or you are proposing something new to the solution of their problems. And uh, statement, problem statement, okay, let's... Let's go. So this is the method section. So I'm going to, uh, oh, it's just now it's literature. Okay. So we also have discussed the literature review section, uh, quite detail, but however it is, um, <clears throat> you know, you have to do it. Yeah. So your assignment, your first assignment requires you to do literature review for the proposal, uh, written proposal. So you have to try to do it because that's how you know how to do to write literature review. But for thesis, the literature review will be a bit more detailed, okay, compared to the proposal because now you already have the results and you need to support your results. So you expand your literature review. Okay, so what we can I can say is literature re review in thesis is more comprehensive compared to the proposal. All right, uh, what belongs in the method? Um, of course, we, usually it's chapter three. Uh, the method section um, is the protocols or the procedures. Uh, and usually it is in active words, active verbs, okay? And um, usually we use it's either present tense or future tense, okay? And it has to be clear, okay? I'm going to show you what, what I meant with uh, clear protocol, clear, clear procedure, because in... in uh, method section it has to be 
detail. Okay, you cannot uh, like assume that people will search for the for the procedure, or the reader will search for the procedure. But it has to be clearly explained in the matter section. Okay, I will show you the example. Okay, in in proposal, if you remember, in proposal, the method section does not have to be detailed. I I think I mentioned to you that the method section in proposal it can be a, a bit of general you don't have to like clearly mention the steps but in thesis uh, the the method section uh, must be detailed and comprehensive okay because why um, it is understood that someone in future will have to replicate the study it means repeat your study. So imagine that somebody has to repeat your study. If you don't put a detail, uh, procedures or protocols, then that will not be, uh, cannot be done by someone else in future, because it it's not about a secret. But somebody has to move on, like, uh, bring the study, expand the study into some level. So that's why we need the method section to be detailed. Okay, is there enough information provided about, okay, this one, I will show the examples. <laughs> you can quote some of the references in, in method section because uh, the methods are usually not yours, okay? Like uh, if you um, follow certain researcher uh, to produce, like say, nanomaterial A, and then you follow 90% um, of the steps from that particular researcher. So you have to cite the, the journal probably that you follow. And if you like uh, have some modification, you, you modify a bit, uh, you have to you can write with with uh, some modification yeah but you have to cite the original uh, journal that you follow to to do the synthesis or to do this whatever steps that you follow okay uh is is something that you have to do you have to cite in matter section yeah because it's not your original unless it is very original something that you create then it's okay <clears throat> And this is citations, yeah? Okay. So now uh, the results section, okay? Uh, of course, I'll be showing um, examples after this. Uh, so this is just a general. <clears throat> what should be in results is, of course, your observations, your discussions, uh, all those graph tables, um, charts okay it should be in the results section okay so make sure that you know um, you don't put results in chapter three and you don't put methods and procedures in chap results chapter so please do uh, differentiate yeah when it is method section is method section which is the protocols and the procedures only but for results section it should be explaining the results, not explaining the protocols anymore. All right? All right. Here you can see you have to mention negative results as well as positive. Okay. Yeah, I mean, um, this depends on uh, very much uh, you have to ask advice from your supervisor. Okay. This is not always the case um, because sometimes, as you know, things happen, uh, not so much of uh, positive results, more on negative results, but it's in the worst case scenario, it's still, it is still a result. So I'm not going to discuss detail on this because this is based on situations and that has to be discussed with, uh, uh, I mean, your, your supervisor 
on how to manage the results. That's why a relation with your supervisor is very, very important. Yeah. So now if you imagine that you are in a court, okay, your thesis is like laying out uh, the evidence, yeah, sufficient detail so that others can draw their own inferences and construct their own explanation. You present the evidence and the reader who's going to like uh, evaluate your thesis will be uh, the jury, the, ju the, the panel, the jury panel who decide whether you have fulfilled your proposed idea or you have fulfilled your objective, okay, based on the evidence. All right. Just a moment. <laughs> Of course, in, in results as well as uh, method section, you need to have a sub-chapter or sub -heads. Okay, that one is, depends on you, how you break the subheading. And of course, with the help of your supervisor. Okay, discussion. Um, again, I will show an example. Uh, whenever the, the 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 main structure in in results section, the general structure, usually we discuss about our own result first. We don't discuss about the theory first, or we don't discuss about uh, someone else's result first. We discuss our own. Let's say you have FTIR, yeah. Let's say you have FTIR. You discuss your observation on your own FTIR of that particular, let's say, material. And then if you find some similarities of uh, your results uh, with someone else, then you can support what we call as corroborate your results by using uh, the previous research. We don't discuss the previous research first, followed by your result. It should be your results first, followed by supporting uh, uh, supporting uh, documents, supporting discussions, supporting results from previous research. You can do that to strengthen uh, your findings. And you can also put in some like uh, theories. Uh, let's say you know the theory about the temperature. If you increase the temperature uh, from your observation, you, you find you found that with the increase of temperature, you found that the reaction kinetic is greater, which suits the uh, theory from uh, what kinetic theory, uh, blah, blah, blah. Okay, that's how you support. This is very crude. I'm talking about a very crude uh, discussion part. Yeah? So it's important to discuss your own results first, clearly. So um, identify the the pattern, okay, which is uh, the, the trend, okay, is it going up, is it, okay, and then discuss, okay, you don't just, uh, what we call, let's say you have uh, the, 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 the graph going up, the graph going down, that is not discussion, That's, that is just like, <laughs> Hmm. I do have the words, the words. You're just like uh, showing, uh, telling people what's going on in your results. Like, okay, the FTIR, you find uh, the hydroxyl group there. But what is the discussion? Okay, it is there in the results, but what is the discussion? Okay, you, you find that uh, there is uh, an, an increment of stretching at certain wavelength. So what is the indication? what is the uh, conclusion from that, okay? So that is discussion, has to be. If you don't put that, you just explain your results, it's go, it goes up and down without any conclusion, without any discussion, critical discussion, then it's not going to be discussion. It's just explaining the results, yeah? You can see here, uh, you can propose mechanism, okay, 
uh, based on your understanding of the theories. And they also, there might be, there's a lot of time you have also agree, a disagreement yeah, with previous work. That happens as well. It's up to you whether you want to highlight the disagreement. <laughs> okay. Interpret results in terms of background laid out in the introduction. Okay, yeah. <clears throat> because we want to achieve uh, the objective. So you have to like link the results with the objective that you propose uh, at the beginning of the chapter. Okay. All right. Okay. And then the last chapter, conclusion, um, is a very, uh, I, I would say, a, a softer way uh, to, to write about your results. If it is in abstract, it's more like straightforward. You want to highlight uh, the, the figures, the numbers. You want to highlight the main important things that you have to achieve in terms of uh, numbers, like you have achieved limit of detections, blah, blah, blah. You have to, you have achieved what the size of nanomaterial, uh, 20 nanometer. So that will be in abstract. But in conclusion, it's more, it's a softer way. You write a story rather than you put the the values, the numbers. Okay, you write a story answering your objective. Okay, so that is conclusion. <laughs> I have difficulty writing conclusion. <laughs> Do not repeat the word. Okay. Do not repeat word for word the abstract introduction or discussion. Okay. So it's, it's different than abstract, but still you can highlight the results, but less numbers, less figures. <laughs> right. <laughs> Usually we put recommendation for future investigation. <clears throat> because we know uh, this doesn't end here. You have uh, more things to do uh, to solve the problems. So you can write recommendations, what you actually cannot fulfill during your research. Yeah. Okay, so I think uh, I'm going to show the first, uh, okay, references. I think this is something that you, this is not really updated and we you have gone through uh, the talk by Dr. Ahmad. So I think uh, this one should be okay, right? So I'm going to share. Uh, yeah. The other one. Just a moment. But if you have questions, uh, please do stop me. Okay. I hope that you can see the PDF, right? Yeah, I can see the PDF. Yes. 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 yes all right. So now, uh, about the title. Okay. So usually the title is done the last, <laughs> because you are limited with a number of words. Uh, usually it's only twenty, and uh, you have to make do so that all the. I mean, the titles will be representing everything that you have done, okay? So here, um, I'm just giving an example of my students. Um, what you want to highlight? Here, you want to highlight what? Uh, the APTA sensor, uh, electrochemical technique, the use of diazonium uh, material, and for tuberculosis disease. So this is what I want... Uh, my students would like to highlight. So it covers everything. <laughs> All right. Okay. So this is quite recent. Uh, you can see it's 2023. So I believe that this is um, the latest uh, format as well. Okay. So you can see the the abstract, okay? Let, let's look at the abstract. <clears throat> you can see there is introduction section a bit, 
one or two lines, okay? And you can see the problem uh, statement. Uh, the, you can see the, the method of detecting TB, the traditional method, there is some issue. So to overcome this limitation, this study highlights the fabrication of uh, this new technique, blah, 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 okay? So you can see this, this has to be done, okay? Uh, and then you start to talk about the approach, okay? The proposed sensor utilize abdominal antibody sandwich, blah, 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 to be measured. And then the abdomen, okay, uh, here because it's important to explain the main uh, principle of the technique, okay? So let's see, I will show you another kind of uh, results. So this one is, you can see the one that I highlighted is the, uh, the approach, okay? Because you're using, let's say this, this uh, student is using CFP10, MPT 64 the main material, the main biomarker in this case. And then he started to talk about the, the, the protocols. Okay, the atomus immobilize using what chemistry? And then uh, uh, with uh, uh, what kind of characterization, spectroscopic char characterization, XPS, FTIR, contact angle, okay? Uh, and then uh, after that, you see the results, yeah? So this is more on what I would say the method section, okay? The principle and the method section, okay? So you can see, uh, you cannot talk about the whole FTIR, right? <laughs> but in this case, uh, the candidate wish to highlight on diisonium means that he has successfully modified the surface with diazonium. So the FTIR part that he would like to uh, talk about is the one related to the diazonium. Okay, you don't have to talk about all the peaks in the FTIR. <laughs> Only that is uh, significant to the um, you wish to highlight, okay? So it, it goes to XPS. And uh, usually, okay, uh, we start with the characterization, spectroscopic characterization first. If you have FTIR, if you have XRD, uh, what the UV, we start with that before you move on to, uh, if in here, because we are using electrochemical technique. So the next uh, results to be presented is on the electrochemical. Usually we start with all the spectroscopic, spectroscopic uh, morphological, like FISAM, TAM. That one is done first before the analysis. Yeah, before the analysis. So you can see that this is the first page of abstract, and this is the second page. So you. Yeah, it's two pages. <laughs> if you have one more, sometimes the the reader can accept. Yeah, the examiner can still accept. <clears throat> so here you highlighted the main results. Okay, of course, sometimes you have uh many other results, but you highlight only the important one. And in the end, you have the conclusion and the impact that that might. Uh, come out from the uh, your work okay so this is abstract and uh, let's say we look at uh, different kind of work yeah. so this is more on material okay this is also by one of my students uh, here is material about a uh, nano carrier uh, is a cancer drug for um, bladder cancer. So nano encapsulation of mitomycin onto abdomen conjugated kytosan for synergistic diagnostic of non-muscle invasive uh, blah, 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 bladder cancer. So you can see this, the same structure. You have an introduction. 
<coughs> here. And then the problem, intravesical chemotherapy remains the forefront. Uh, however, this approach is, is plagued by inadequate drug concentration uh, at the site of the lesion. So that's the issue. So the present work is trying to um, improve that issue by using a targeted drug delivery system. So here you have expressed the introduction, the problem statement, and your solution. Okay, uh, so here the solution is by using kytosan based CAFO as drug nanocarriers uh, for encapsulating the drug mitomycin. All right, uh, and then combine with fluorescent probes for monitoring. <laughs> so the the uh, the character characterizations done is using FISM, HRTM, and then FDIR. Okay. And after that is the results. Okay. So you have to know which result is very important. So in this case, we have when we are talking about drug delivery, of course, the results that, that people want to look is the drug release study. How much the drug can be able to release from the uh, delivery system. And the second part is uh, because this candidate uh, work on targeted. Targeted means that um, if you know, uh, chemotherapy is, is very general. It does not just um targeting cancer cell it, it also targets uh, healthy cells so that that is the issue so in order to do targeted cancer cell the delivery system is conjugated with aptama so aptama is a dna um nucleic acid based uh targeting ligand uh, recognizing the cancer cells, all right, uh, and uh, this candidate has studied uh, what do you call computational uh, to look at the molecular docking of the receptor binding with the cancer cells, because it's quite difficult uh, to actually can be done via experiment, but unfortunately. Um, <clears throat> Due to pandemic, there's a lot of hurdles to do the wet experiments, so we do only computational. So you can see that uh, uh, the this is the results. Uh, not so much of uh, figures, numbers, but you can see it's more on discussion. Yeah. Let's go back to the thesis just now. So after abstract, okay, so Malay abstract uh, is, is compulsory. So you need to find helps to, to translate. <laughs> All right, some acknowledgement. Okay, for external, we need uh, for PhD, we need to find international external examiner. <laughs> for you, you don't need. <laughs> okay. <clears throat> right, so you have table of contents. Uh, usually, this page number, you can wait until all the corrections are done because this will change throughout the corrections. Yeah? <clears throat> so this is basically how you do it. You have uh, subsections, uh, subheadings. Oh. 
So you need to have uh, references followed by appendix and uh, by data. Okay, if you have uh, like uh, published some uh, scientific journals or att uh, attended conferences, then you put it here, list of publications. Yeah? All right, uh, let's move on to the first. Uh, okay, list of tables. So these are what we call as caption, caption of the table. So by now, I think you should know what is caption. What is legend? Okay. All right. List of figures. So these are the captions. You can see that the captions are detailed. Yeah, it's, it's long. It is supposed to be that way. Okay, why? I will show why in the... Results section later. You cannot have like uh, very short captions. It has to be self-explanatory. Okay. <laughs> List of abbreviations, okay? So this is very important. Whenever that you are, uh, even though you have the list of abbreviations here, whenever you write in the thesis, when the, that is the first time that you introduce that word, you still have to put it in full first. And then the next one, you can use the abbreviation. But what I want to highlight here, uh, the name of a chemical reagent, you don't have to put the chemical reagent in in list of abbreviation. Yeah, This is not supposed to be like hydrogen peroxide. <clears throat> to drink <clears throat> okay now uh, the introduction part hmm? background is actually introduction so it's similar to what we have discussed um, during our classes that you have to introduce the the things that you want to work on like here, the main issue is TB. You start from general and then go into uh, more focus. Yeah. So you can see that uh, the thesis talks about uh, the, the thesis starts with a general information on TB. So the issue on TB detection, it becomes narrow. And um, now you can see it's more focused on electrochemical detection techniques. Because there's a lot of other techniques as well. And he also talked about the material that he wants to use. In this case, is diazonium. And the use of aptoma. Okay, that's it. Because introduction, you don't need to have that much. But at least you do have some... Uh, you do sites some references okay to make sure that people understood uh, the the needs to do that the to the needs on the problems to solve the problems okay yeah uh, okay problem statement this is uh, basically uh, uh, the problem statement is okay because he's trying to talk about uh, the issue of diagnostic of TB and then putting in why electrochemical is more important uh, uh, is important to solve that issue okay. and since uh, this is uh, chemistry related okay uh, he puts in the chemistry of surface modification of the electrode. Okay. Uh, explaining why diazonium uh, is being uh, used as the surface modifier. Okay. Uh, novelty of study is up to you. Sometimes if you wish to highlight, then it's okay. Uh, if you do not wish to highlight, it should be, uh, I mean, it should be spotted in your problem statement, actually. 
So it's up to you. Uh, objective, of course, is compulsory. So the main aim and the specific objective here. Yeah? Uh, you can, I think we have discussed about how to write objective before. And then scope and limitation is also up to you whether you want to highlight that you do have uh, limitations that you cannot cover. All right. Let's look at the second example. So you can see the same structure. Yeah, abbreviations. Yeah, introductions. So oh, it's about bladder cancer. Okay, there's a lot of bladder cancers. I don't see any diagrams yet, but you can also have diagrams in your introduction as well. Uh, Okay, about the treatment of uh, bladder cancer using BCG. And then, about the nanocarrier, <laughs> the abdomen for targeted. Okay, now you, uh, this is what I want to highlight. Uh, whenever that you have uh, figures, diagrams, tables, pictures, photos, or whatever, it has to be mentioned first. Yeah? You can see figure 1.1 1 .1 is mentioned and described first before the figure come out. Okay? It cannot be the figure first and the, the it mentioned after. It has to be mentioned first before it appears. Okay? <laughs> and this, this one... Um, because uh, the 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 student created this by them by herself, means that he she draw this by herself, then you don't have to like cite. Okay, she I don't know, created using biorender.com. So she wants to tell people how it works. Okay, how the proposal that uh, schematic representation of abdomen, how the abdomen will be targeting the cancer cell. So she draw it by herself, which is a good uh, skills to, to have. <clears throat> and then start, of course, problem statement. Sometimes you do uh, yeah, extra work like research motivation. This up to you. It's, it's okay. Kind of some, it is acceptable. <clears throat> so it's about, the problem is about um, the, the present system does not have targeted uh, strategy. It destroy, uh, destroys normal cell. Whereas uh, once we introduce uh, Aptima and drug, uh, nano delivery system, uh, it should be improving the delivery uh, and as well as targeting the cancer cell only. Did you win? Okay, so this is the explanation of how the interaction of the nanocarrier with the cells. Oh, okay. Okay, and you find what is the novelty. Why? Because uh, this is something that usually being asked in the Viva. That's why you put the novelty section. Uh, so that you already answered whatever <laughs> uh, required by the examiner. So research objective, uh, scope and limitations, okay. 
Okay, uh, let's look at second part. Back to these, uh, the first example. You find that <clears throat> you can see that the, the format of this is different than to the format of this uh, second example. Why? Because this is the final version. Because this student has Viva, has finished the Viva session. This is the final version of the thesis. But this one is the draft submitted uh, before the Viva. So usually it can be different. Uh, the final one has to be this way. Okay. Okay. Uh, literature review, I think we have talked a lot. Uh, I hope that you can read uh, as many literature reviews so to 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 grab the ideas what is a good literature review what is a not so good literature review okay that is how you learn actually uh, writing literature review and we have done all the tools that you you can use uh, by using AI to keep up with the papers yeah <clears throat> Okay, so make sure if you pick uh, results or diagrams from someone else, you have to cite the papers. <coughs> All right. I'm going to find uh, if there is any uh, tables. Yeah. So you can see, uh, try your best, as I mentioned, not to summarize, but to to blend all your whatever that you are reading and then make it into a story. Okay. So I don't know whether this uh, candidate has uh, presented um, that style. Uh, well, <laughs> it's, it's actually difficult unless you have a very good uh, command of language, actually. And then uh, sometimes you can do in a form of table uh, when you try to review uh, a lot of papers, you can list the, the, the papers in a form of table and you probably explain uh, uh, some of the papers, not all, okay? <clears throat> okay. <clears throat> The idea of having literature review is actually you can publish the review paper. <laughs> so it's a good way of uh, writing uh, to have a publication if you want to. All right, uh, let's move. <coughs> So this is uh, what I meant by having a, a table, okay? You can make it into table because sometimes you review a lot of papers. Summary of developed diagnostic for TB utilizing MPT64 and CFP10 as a biomarker. But when you have this kind of table, uh, you have to tell the story about the table means that you highlight some results from here. It cannot just be you put a table then you, I mean, you expect people to read it. No, you have to highlight what are the most interesting here. Uh, what is uh, the highlights of uh, the list of um, journals that you, or the list of research that you put in the table, okay? So this is how you put the table and put the results. You have to know which result is, is important. In this case, in, in our case, we usually want the analytical performance, the biomarker, 
and uh, sensitivity specificity. <clears throat> so depends on <clears throat> depends on your research. What kind of uh, what are the parameters that you are interest interested in? Yeah. So you can see the table is quite long. All right, but it has to be discussed. I hope the discussion is there. Yeah. <laughs> it should be it shouldn't it should it shouldn't be uh end like this yeah they list some of the work on it should be extended to uh telling what are the findings that you uh found uh interesting from the t the list of references that you listed you should have that in your literature review okay right we are now eight thirty all right uh let's look at the sec second example so similar we go very fast it's quite similar it's just that the style it, this is more on material rather than analytical technique So this is the literature review, yeah? And how, which part you put, uh, you should put is, you start with the general first and then you uh, narrow down the focus. Okay, let's look at it. Okay, pitfalls. Pitfalls means that the problems. And then why nano delivery probably the um a good example or can at least solve some of the some of the issues. Okay, you can see that it start to narrow down. How much you need to put in um, literature review depends on you. It has to be like enough. I always say enough. Why? Because you we have to consult your supervisor. <laughs> How much is enough? Because you, you cannot put everything in your literature review. All right. Okay. So you can see also tables. Uh, you can see now is what is the mo uh, what are the interesting uh, what are the highlighted parameters now here is the drug the delivery system and the application uh, different with the previous one that I've shown you yeah now you can see that uh, uh, I don't know whether there is explanation table. <laughs> Same. There should be some explanation. <laughs> okay. This is all someone else's results, eh? not the candidate's results. Okay. Right, I think the last one is uh, we're going to, this, to look at example of chapter 3 and then we stop. That's it. Uh, because chapter 4 requires uh, more discussion. Yeah. So chapter 3, is it okay? The size, let me enlarge. So this is chapter three on the TB study. Okay, um, this candidate choose to like do an overview. Okay, 
uh, but you can do that <laughs> but does not have to be it, it's up to you okay. you can start away you can straight away start with the materials and reagents okay you have to tell the sources okay like where you this one is the supplier of the DNA <clears throat> And then very important to do flow chart okay, in chapter chapter three, which is method section. So you have even you have you tell the stories on the protocols, but the flow of the protocols is very important. So flow charts is advisable for you to put it there. Okay. All right. So this is the biomaterials. So you have to declare the details of the biomaterials if you are using one, the chemical reagents. You can see supplier. Usually we also put uh, the, what do you call, purity is 99%, 95%, but then this is also acceptable, yeah? Okay, and the apparatus, the instrumentation that you use, the model, okay. Okay, you can put uh, diagrams uh, to make sure that people understand. Okay, so when you talk about the, the instrumentation, you don't have to put the theory. <laughs> Sometimes people put the theory of how the UVVs work. No, you don't have to put it there. Okay, you just have to explain uh, what's the function of uh, you use that uh, instrument first. So this one is to measure absorbance. And then, uh, uh, yeah, you don't have to put the theory. <laughs> okay, you don't have to put all the theories there. All right, okay, experimental procedures. Um, all right, it depends on, uh, usually, as I mentioned, you start with the basic one first. Uh, like uh, in here, you binding study or preparation of reagents. You start with all the general one first. Uh, and you... Do the <laughs> characterization like spectroscopic, morphological first. Okay. Fabrication. So you can see here. Let me show you what I mean by uh, detail. Yeah, so fabrication of after sensor for the detection study. So you can see now the the protocol is is very much uh, detail. Uh, it is like one hour with EDC. EDC has been described before, uh, I think in somewhere below the uh, above this. And you put all the necessary, like 100 millimolar, 25 millimolar. Okay, this is what I meant by it has to be detailed. Meaning that if you read this, you can repeat this. <laughs> Someone else read this, you can easily repeat. All right? So this is uh, something that you have to observe when writing uh, the method section. It has to be detailed. Okay. Even the rinsing, the incubation, all right. And uh, you can uh, choose to like assist the reader by showing a schematic diagram. Even though you have the instruction here, you can help the reader by giving an uh, diagram assisted uh, protocol. <clears throat> Okay, sometimes uh, you have problems with uh, what we call uh, to name that. Yeah? Uh, like here, you have a screen printed carbon electrode. And then you have screen printed carbon electrode with modified. 
Uh, I don't remember what is ABA. <laughs> and now the second part, you have screen printed carbon electrode modified with ABA, and then you have EDC and HS. So you have to be very clear in your writing, explaining which is which. Okay, you cannot just simply. Sometimes you choose SPSE. Sometimes you name it different. Uh, name okay it has to be standard throughout writing your thesis yeah as long as the reader understand <coughs> then it's fine yeah you don't have to put aptema in full but you have defined it above that this stands for uh, what kind of modification on the surface of the electrode <coughs> but um yeah this student assists with the uh, diagram which is much better all right uh, now all right we move on okay you can see very detailed though so you have to develop skills on uh, how to construct tables okay uh, for tables there is certain format of table accepted in thesis okay Okay, I think that's it for protocols. Yeah. Let's look at the last one uh, for yes. This also, there is chapter overview. I think it's a trend already. <laughs> I didn't have it before. Uh, chapter overview on what uh, is done throughout. And then, of course, you have flow charts. Okay. Uh, materials. Okay. Uh, you can use this style. You don't have to use like table style. You can use like a paragraph style. <laughs> Here the apparatus or instrumentations as you as you was you okay uh, no theory on the instrumentation but explanation on how the measurement is done. Mm. Okay. When you have okay preparation of material, the synthesis technique must be very detailed. Okay. Assist with diagram if you wish. And then RSM, okay. Right, let's move. I'm not good in RSM. <laughs> and then computational, because she did computational study. Then binding study, delivery. You can see very detailed. Yeah, even the pictures are there. <laughs> Okay. All right. Okay. So I think uh, uh that's it. Uh, what I'm showing you uh is more uh yeah, PhD level. <laughs> so I'm not saying your uh dissertation in future will have to look like this, but at least try your best uh to make it uh you know, uh, uh, a, a better quality, the best quality of thesis, yeah? So I, I'm sure that some of you, I don't know, 
uh, whether all of you has done final year project thesis before. So uh, it, it should be upgraded. Yeah. Now, the best way, again, is to read good thesis, find a good thesis and read. That is the best way to learn. Because uh, in, in, uh, in writing thesis, it's about sentences. It's about how you write the story. Okay? So that's why uh, if you read a lot, that helps you to present your um, thesis or in any chapters. Okay? So next week... Um, we have to um, discuss the last part, which is the chapter four, okay? And uh, that will be the last part on thesis. And then we continue to talk about scientific writing. Scientific writing means that uh, what, what do you write in journals? Okay. Um, of course, this is not something expected for you to do. But since this is in the research methodology uh, subject, okay, this is something that we wish to train uh, the, uh, the students of this subject to, to practice on writing. That will be your actually your second assignment. So I hope your first assignment is doing fine. <laughs> Any issues with the first assignment? So far, no? so good, doctor. So far, so good. <laughs> Having a lot of other assignments, so yes, I'm slowly yeah. getting there. Thanks. Ah, okay. I hope that you you know that you are required to let me off the record first. Which one? Ah, <laughs> uh, oh, stop. Uh, there are three parts that you need to 